Hi everyone, I'm Scott, and I'm making this video as a response to a comment that was left on one of my videos a few weeks back. I was making a movie about, uh, sorry, a video about uh, some of my favorite movies of a particular year. I got a comment from one of my longtime viewers, uh, his name is Benway20 here on YouTube. Um, and uh, I wanted to just read you a little bit about uh, what he, uh, he wrote in the comment here. The life of David Gale seemed very contrived with the most self-defeating twist ending ever. As a friend of mine put it, it kind of becomes a pro-death penalty movie by accident. Now, he's not alone in thinking that uh, this is a bad movie. There are lots of people who think it's a bad movie. In matter of fact, Roger Ebert reviewed the movie in 2003 when it came out, and he gave it zero stars. Zero. Zero stars. <laughs> That's pretty extreme. Um, naturally, when the movie came out, I was curious about it because of the director. Uh, Alan Parker, who I'd seen a number of good films from, and of course the cast, which includes uh, Kate Winslet, Kevin Spacey, and Laura Linney, amongst other people. Um, I waited to watch it until it was on video, but I did uh, eventually see it, and I really wish I'd had the opportunity to talk with Ebert about it um, when he was still alive. Um, I actually did get to see him one time in person in a book signing, but I hadn't seen the movie at that point. Um, so I wasn't able to engage him in a discussion about it. But um, defending David Gale, as I like to say, is something that I've enjoyed doing in the past, and I'd like to do so now. Um, like I said, Mr. Benway 20 is not alone in thinking this is a terrible movie. Um, I've recommended it to a couple different people, some of whom didn't like it, mostly because of Kate Winslet, I guess. Maybe they didn't think her American accent was convincing, and some people thought it was pretty good. Um, let me read you a little bit about um, uh, from Roger Ebert's review right here. Um, in case you are uh, curious, I've included the text in the description below because I made a few alterations in the review for clarity because I didn't uh, include the whole thing. Um, David Gale, played by Kevin Spacey, claims to have been framed by right-wing supporters of capital punishment because his death would provide such poetic irony in support of the noose, the gas, or the chair. David Gale's character is an anti-death penalty activist, along with being a college professor. Um, <clears throat> also, um, the Laura Linney character, Constance, is also uh, one of his uh, fellow activists. Um, far from killing the Laura Linney character, Constance Haraway, he says... He had every reason not to, and he explains that to journalist Bitsy Bloom, played by Kate Winslet, in flashbacks that make up about half the story. Bitsy becomes convinced of David's innocence. Now, if you haven't seen the movie uh, The Life of David Gale, um, this video is not going to be of a lot of use to you. Um, you could watch it if you're not planning to see the movie, um, but um, this video is mostly for people who have seen the movie and understand a lot of the twists and turns uh, in the storyline. Um, so I wouldn't recommend watching it if you haven't seen the movie and are planning to, or even if you're not planning to. Um, then again, if you're just curious about it, please go ahead. I don't mind at all. Um, so anyway, um, before I get into basically the um, logistics of this movie in particular, I'd like to uh, talk first of all about the phenomenon of the unlikable main character. Um, it's not all that common in movies. Um, sometimes a movie will focus on a criminal of some kind, a guy who's a professional bank robber, or works with organized crime, or maybe a con man, what have you. These people, by the nature of what they do in the course of their life, are unlikable, but there may be something that's charming or charismatic about them, or maybe they make some turn uh, in their life for the better at the end, like, say, Christian Bale and maybe Adams in the end of... Um, American Hustle, or maybe they get killed, you know, and they have, there's some poetic justice meted out to them. But for the most part, the main characters of any particular story are meant to be likable because they're trying to uh, um, achieve some objective. And our, a, 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 the viewer, we are supposed to emotionally connect with them and root for them and be satisfied when they achieve it or feel sad when they don't, you know, sometimes they don't get what they want. Um, but with an unlikable character or a criminal or what have you, um, there usually is some sort of comeuppance for them. Um, maybe they achieve what they want, maybe they get away with their crime or the bad thing that they did, but they feel bad about it or that they've lost something in the process. Um, and David Gale, this movie David Gale, kind of doesn't follow that mode all that much. Um, the main character, of course, as I said, is a university professor in Texas. Um, and also an anti-death penalty activist, and he's uh, charged and convicted with the murder of one of his colleagues, Constance, played by Laura Linney. Um, as the movie begins, he um, has lost his last appeal, and he is quite definitely going to be executed uh, in just a few days' time. 
So it cho he chooses that exact moment um, to grant his first public interview, if I remember correctly. Uh, the very first interview that he gives with any journalist is as he is basically on death row with Kate Winslet, the journalist played uh, the character named Bitsy Bloom, who comes to Texas to interview him specifically. Now, why exactly is it that he picks her? This is important. Bitsy, as the movie begins, we learn, actually spent some time in jail recently herself because um, she was uh, found in contempt of court for review, uh, re refusing to reveal a source on a story that she worked on recently involving child pornography. Um, she would rather, you know, go to jail and protect her source than reveal the name of a child pornographer um, because that's where her, you know, her values lie. She values, you know, when people uh, keep, uh, entrust her with a secret or they tell her something off the record or they want to be protected as a source, she will do that no matter what, even if it means going to jail herself. And this is the important reason why they pick her, why David Gale and his lawyer and his colleagues uh, pick her to conduct this interview with him because they know that if David Gale tells her something in confidence, she will take it to her grave. She will not reveal it no matter what. They think, well, if she's going to keep the secrets of child pornographers, she's definitely going to keep our secrets if we entrust her with something confidential. And that's the main reason why they pick her, which I'll get to. Now, the twist ending, of course. The twist ending is um, what a lot of people really object to. Um, as Benway said, um, it uh, becomes a pro-death penalty movie by accident, and it's a self-defeating twist ending. Um, yeah, well, I, I can't really argue with um, whatever emotional response anyone would have to this and feeling that they're betrayed. After all, David Gale spends the entire movie saying, hey, I didn't kill Constance, and there might be some evidence out there um, that would support that. Um, possibly a videotape, because um, when... Uh, the character of Constance was found dead in her kitchen. There was a tripod sitting in her kitchen close by, which would suggest that there was a camera that recorded the event, and the evidence is out there somewhere, just out of David Gale's reach, because he's in prison, he can't get to it, he doesn't know where it is. So, fair warning, again I'm going to get into the revelations of the movie, so if you haven't seen it, don't want to be spoiled, don't proceed any further. What we learn in the end is that David Gale was fully aware of everything that was going on involving Constance's death, and that he helped actually plan it. Um, at a certain point in the movie, um, during one of the flashbacks while he's telling his story, um, he describes um, being involved in a debate, uh, a televised debate with the governor of Texas about the death penalty, and the, de and the governor challenges him to come up with one person, one person who has wrongly been convicted and put to death in Texas, um, and David Gale can't do it. He can't uh, come up with a specific name of anyone who has been, he knows for sure, wrongly convicted. So he and Constance and some other people who are involved in the anti-death penalty uh, activism decide to make him that person. They set him up and point the evidence his way as the murder of Constance, whereas Constance actually committed suicide. Uh, and then plan to release the tape after he was executed to show that he was in fact innocent and that he was wrongly convicted. Is this dishonest? Absolutely. Is this, you know, a big trick played on the entire world to get people, more people on board uh, against, anti, against the death penalty? Absolutely, 100%. Does this make the movie bad? Well, some people feel, yeah, it's a little bit of a, uh, an abrupt twist ending that uh, appends everything. You take this character you think was a noble person, and he set out to achieve something noble in a rather anti-noble way. But does that make the movie bad? Um, here's my, my take on it is this. Um, the last scene of the movie, basically, is one where the twist is revealed, big revelation. Um, Constance, uh, excuse me, uh, Bitsy, the journalist, Kate Winslet's character, receives a tape at her office, a videotape in the mail. On the label, it says, off the record. And you know, Bitsy's integrity says when she receives information off the record, she will not reveal it to anyone no matter what. So she finds a VCR, she looks at the tape, which is labeled off the record, and it shows the end of the video. The video, of course, is one that she discovered earlier. The one that shows Constance actually committing suicide rather than being killed. And while she tried to get the tape to the proper authorities to stop Gail's execution, she was unsuccessful. She was too late. David Gale was put to death anyway. 
So the tape came out and it was revealed that David Gale didn't actually kill him, that it was a suicide, and so, you know, he was posthumously exonerated or whatever. But what the tape that Kate Winslet uh, is, is sent at the very end shows that David Gale was actually there at the scene at the time. He was standing off camera when Constance committed suicide, but after he died, he steps into the frame to show that he actually was there and he was part of planning the whole thing to, again, as I said, establish him as a wrongly convicted person, a wrongly executed person, which is, you know, again, very dishonest because he'd been proclaiming the whole time that someone was out there doing this to him when in fact he was part of planning the whole thing. So the whole point of him revealing this to Bitsy at the end is not simply to give us a last minute, whoa, holy crap, that happened. It was also with the intention of absolving Bitsy of any responsibility. What he's doing is saying, hey, you tried your best, but this is not your fault. Do not blame yourself for what happened to me because this is what I wanted to have happen. He alleviates any guilt or any, you know, responsibility that she might feel for having uh, been unable to save his life because he wanted to die. He wanted to be the person to be executed incorrectly um, to further the cause of the anti-death penalty. And of course, because this tape is labeled off the record, Kate Winslet is bound by her integrity, her journalistic ethics, not to reveal this to anyone, and she has to let this lie stand in the public. Now, is that ideal? No, it isn't. Is it uh, um, shady and underhanded? It basically makes Kevin Spacey, as I've said previously, the anti-death penalty activist version of Kaiser Soze. It tells this really elaborate story, um, which parts of it may be totally true or may not be true, uh, in order to achieve a particular end, which is exactly what happened. Um, let me le read you a little bit more of um, Roger Ebert's review. The acting in the life of David Gale is splendidly done, but, deserve, but serves a merit trickiest case? I'm not really sure what that word means. <clears throat> the direction is by the British director Alan Parker, who at one point had never made a movie I wholly disapprove of, disapproved of. Now has he ever. The secrets of the plot must, must remain unrevealed by me so that you can be offended by them for yourself, but let it be said that this movie is about as corrupt, intellectually bankrupt, and bankrupt and morally dishonest as it could possibly be without David Gale actually hiring himself out to as a joker at the court of Saddam Hussein. Okay, <laughs> Spacey and Parker are honorable men. Why did they go to Texas to make this silly movie? The last shot made me want to throw something at the screen. Maybe Spacey and Parker. I am sure the filmmakers believe their film is against the death penalty. I believe it supports it and hopes to discredit the opponents of the penalty as unprincipled fraudsters. What I do not understand is the final revelation on the videotape. Surely David Gale knows that Bitsy Bloom cannot keep it private without violating, violating the ethics of journalism and sacrificing the biggest story of her career. So it serves no functional purpose except to give a cheap thrill to the audience. Slack jaws, it is shameful. Now, I disagree with that point. Again, like I said, the whole reason why they picked Bitsy in the first place is because they know that if they told her something in conference or show her something in conference on a videotape, that she won't reveal it ever. And, you know, she has to live with the fact that she can't talk about that, but she also doesn't have to live with any responsibility for what happened to David Gill. Roger disagreed with the philosophy of the movie, or what appears to be the philosophy of the movie anyway. Um, again, uh, Benway, as he mentioned in his comment, was talking about how his friend says that it becomes a pro-death penalty at movie by accident. I don't necessarily think that it was ever meant to be either a pro-death penalty movie or an anti-death penalty movie. Why does it have to be either? Why does there have to be some particular message, some sort of moral message or what have you? It's a movie. It's a story. It's a made-up story. Um, and you might feel manipulated by it. You might not. You might appreciate what it's doing or not. Um, but to say that it has a particular message and to know what that message is, I'm not the kind of person that will watch a movie and then read every single interview with the filmmakers to try and get a sense of what it was they were trying to say. I sort of take the movie as it is. And with this, I, you know, found it quite admirable. There are um, a lot of movies that I see. I see, like, a new movie every week, either in the theater or on disc. Um, and a lot of them I think about for a while afterwards. This one stayed with me for much longer. I thought about, I couldn't stop thinking about it for weeks afterward um, because of what was going on in it. And uh, 
it sort of challenged for me uh, the idea that um, the main character, you know, has to be <laughs> um, either a serve some sort of noble purpose or uh, or if not get his sort of just desserts or his comeuppance or suffer in some way at the end. Like uh, the priest says in uh, Godfather Part 3 after he hears Michael Corleone's confession, your sins are terrible and it is just that you suffer. Now, you could say that the character of David Gale gave up something big. He gave up his life in service of his uh, the cause that he was struggling for. That's why the movie is called The Life of David Gale rather than simply David Gale or what have you. Um, he did it in a way that many people, including myself, feel was dishonest, you know, certainly underhanded, uh, and basically trying to basically trick the whole world into thinking that uh, he was, um, you know, an innocent man uh, wrongly executed without, you know, under, you know, he, uh, um, how do I put this, that he didn't want that to happen when in fact he actually did. Um, but does that make the movie bad? I don't think so. I don't think so. There are plenty of movies about characters who are unlikable. Um, movies like There Will Be Blood, for example, um, this is the first one that comes off the top of my head. I'm not going to uh, get into movies based on real people because that's a different animal altogether. But as far as simply fictional stories go, um, to have a character basically get away with everything bad that he did in the end, in a sense, uh, is very, very rare. There's one particular movie from the 90s with uh, Michael Caine in which he does some very bad things, kills some people, and enjoys the success from that. Gets away with everything and is very happy and content at the end. That's rare. That's really, really rare. Um, and so, although David Gale, the character of David Gale, didn't get to live, didn't you know, get to see his his own success, basically his ill-gotten success in drawing more attention towards the uh, sympathy towards the anti-death penalty side of his argument. Um, yeah, again, that doesn't make it a bad movie for me. I found it. You know, pretty exciting, actually. And it has a really great score, too, which um, is has been used in a number of different movie trailers over the years. Uh, movies like uh, Milk and the Artist and Munich. Munich was great. When I watched the trailer for Munich for the first time, and music came up towards the second half, somehow I got this image of my head, this image, this very clear image of Kate Winslet looking upset about something, a close-up of her face. I'm thinking, why am I thinking of this now? And only later did I realize, oh, yeah, that music is from David Gale, and it's from the scene where she's watching the tape at the end. Because I watched that scene a bunch of times, and the music is really great. It builds this great crescendo, and so they used it a number of times. So great score, real, great acting. You know, I think it's a terrific movie. Really, really like it a lot. So I thought I'd make a little video talking about it. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, and uh, thanks again to Mr. Benway for um, commenting as he does on so many of my videos. Really, really appreciate it, as I do all the people who watch my videos regularly. I'll see you again real soon. Later.